Hi guys, my name is Sean. I'm a house plant enthusiast from Jakarta, Indonesia. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you the care and propagation of the Euphorbia trigona. This is actually a succulent from the central or west African regions. This is a very, very, very common succulent. It's often used in landscaping. This is an easy going, very, very easy going succulent to care for. I know I'm a succulent killer, just so you know, I kill most of my succulents, except a handful, and this is one of them. And it's got really, really interesting, beautiful architectural spikes on the main stem. And they do put out leaves. And these leaves do come and go. So they, I guess, they photosynthesize and they help the plant along when the condition is right. And then when they're tired, the leaves will just yellow up and fall off uh, rows by rows. I don't have a lot of leaves going on right now. It's quite little, but it is so beautiful. But they do uh, come back now and then. And these guys, actually, when you cut them, they will grow two to three vines out of the place where you cut. So if you look online for these guys, you'll see massive, massive pots of them where they just grow upwards like that into a bush. And they don't need really, really big pots for this. I'm assuming that their roots uh, don't take up too much space. This lives outdoor in bright indirect light. They do like a tiny bit of direct light. And if you look at the uh, Euphorbia trigona rubra, that's actually a red version of this. It's much sexier than this and it's actually on my wish list. But I have way too many plants now to care for, so I'm not gonna be getting that anytime soon. But it's got a red version of this. Um, sometimes it's got a little bit of green left on it, but it's got so much more character to it. Um, I do water this every day lightly only because it's living in very, very draining cacti succulent potting mix and it's living in terracotta pot. And I've had this plant for about two years now. When I got it, it was actually a single plant here. I made, I made the cut and then three of these vines appeared. And today I'm going to be cutting them up some more so that they can bush out and then we're going to propagate a lot of these vines. Because of the ease of propagation, these guys are actually very, very inexpensive, which makes them very, very good succulent for our uh, beginners but you don't want to have them around pets and children precisely because of these thorns here they can get really really sharp and i've just been putting slow release fertilizer on this and with most succulents here they're actually very prone to mealybugs and scale as well in scale you can see that this armored insect that is usually brown that would stick onto the plant sometimes you would mistake them for like a woody part of the stem because these guys they do get woody over time if you have them for many many years the lower part of the plant will just turn you know into a, a, like a tree trunk basically. But scale would be the spots of them and you can actually remove them with neem oil or a little bit of soap, soapy water, just lightly rub them off. Yeah, and mealybugs, you would treat them with neem oil or if you prefer chemical means, you can do that. But yeah, they're quite susceptible to those here in my climate. Oh, and I do want to bring out that there is um, this plant is triangular uh, if you look at it from up top, which is why it's called the trigona and it's got really 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 nice pattern on the center of its trunk. I actually really do enjoy having this around and whenever they grow, which they're doing now, you can see that they're growing upwards. The new growth is light green in color, it's got flashy beautiful new leaves and it's just gonna take over the space very very slowly and elegantly upwards. So this is actually quite uh, a stunning plant that is very very inexpensive that is a bit underrated but yeah easy to come by as well all right so let's get started but first of all i want to point out that there's these babies that are sprouting from the sides of this plant so it's actually already starting to branch out on its own without the cut but as we make the cut it will branch out even more and i can control where it will branch out and i actually don't want to cut them in the same level i want to texture uh, the the layers of them so I want to cut them at various angles and yeah they're gonna give you milky sap which is actually a little bit toxic a little bit irritating this is known as the African milk plant or milk tree if I'm not wrong and this one I'm gonna cut a little bit higher I should be wearing gloves but <laughs> oh well I did not get pre I did not prepare for this and so I'm gonna cut a little bit higher man there's so much sap all over the place ah I didn't get I didn't get some on me so this is good so I'm just gonna let this uh, bleed out a little bit and then so this is the parent plant I'm gonna put it away so one final look at it so it's got uh, three cuts here and I do want to keep this away from the rain. I think this, I do want this to dry out in callus. I'm sure this is, uh, this sap is going to help it along with callusing. It actually protects them from being eaten up by other animals. Now, as for these ones, these guys, all right. Yeah, she looks, looks pretty here. It's so unreal. It's like the weird 
animal tentacles. Hang on, let me give you a closer look. It looks like weird animal tentacles on my table. <laughs> All right, so I've got nine pots over there. I don't think I want anything more than that, even though I can definitely produce more. But yeah, I'm not gonna do that. This is not an expensive plant, so I don't want it to take too much space. And remember which side up it is. You don't want to plant it the wrong way down. So the easiest way for me, I guess, I'm just gonna put a little bit of activated charcoal on the uh, table here. I'm gonna dab carefully. I'm just gonna dab it on here. This is to sterilize the wound a bit. Some people actually wait uh, for this to callus over the next few days. I don't have that kind of patience. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stick this directly into the soil and this is my general purpose potting mix by the way it's made with cocoa peat perlite burnt rice hull and a bit of worm casting i normally would give this my cacti succulent potting mix but they don't ship very well so this is fine i just want to water this a lot less often and because it is still a fresh wound i'm not going to water this for the next two days so i'm technically allowing this plant to callus but in the soil i don't know if that makes sense i'm not getting the soil moist at all and my potting mix here is pretty much sterile with the exception of a bit of worm casting which is organic material but this should not rot i'm guessing it should and i'm gonna keep this in indoors away from the rain bright indirect light and almost never water it so yeah the more roots that it has once it's established the more i can water it next third third day from this propagation i'm gonna water this deeply i'm gonna leave it alone i'm gonna let it dry out between watering let it get good light and let it root i actually don't know how long this will take so this will be an interesting project to see how long they actually take to root and for these guys because they are the bottom or mid section cuttings they're going to put out three vines on the top this is just how they do i'm going to finish up with the rest of them and i'm not going to waste your time so i'll show you the family portrait after i'm done all right so i actually ended up with 10 pots because there was just one extra and this purple stuff is actually carboforan or branded under foradan it's uh, highly toxic i'm not proud of using it but it helps keep the pests at bay and it releases over a long period of time and the pellets uh, yellow pellets you see are slow release fertilizer this is balanced npk so it's um yeah it's pretty good for cacti you don't want too much of a nitrogen on these guys because they don't have a lot of leaves Ooh, this, look at that it's such a cool little angle over here <laughs> it's like a little runway for i don't know a little mouse or something <laughs> welcome to a six weeks update i'm very excited to show you this update can't believe what's taken off in six weeks are you ready all right i'm gonna open your eyes look at that this is the parent plant look at all these vines that are appearing from this plant this is so robust hang on let me find a better spot for it oh wow 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 wee wow look at that new vine new vine hello it's like waving at us it is so beautiful i think i'm in love with this plant <laughs> it was so boring it was just doing the three the three uh, what do you call it stems growing upwards and just did nothing for a whole year and look at all these growth that are just happening here. And this is trying to put a new teeny tiny little vine. There's many, many vines from here. And I've seen them grow in a massive bush, almost like a tree. So this may become that someday. <laughs> but yeah, I'm very excited for this. But the cuttings are also very exciting. I'm gonna quickly uh, show you one last view of this before we move on to the cuttings. All right, so I want to quickly explain how I've been caring for the cuttings here. They've been kind of living on the other side of this table where it gets a little bit of, you see the head is poking through. It gets a little bit of uh, direct sunlight, but mostly bright indirect light all day long. So my gardener sometimes move it here under the shelf. I don't know why he keeps doing that, but when they do that, see, they're not getting any light. Yeah, they will not do well. So I, maybe because he waters them and he just kind of puts it back randomly. But yeah, it needs to be all the way far out by the window uh, to, to get they can get better light. Do you see that? All right, so let's go from left. This one is interesting. So I do think that these guys do better with midsection cuttings. Oh, and I do water this lightly every two to three days or so. Uh, I just watered it today, so it's a little bit wet. But I do let them dry out completely. Look at all this new side shoot. These are all going to sh 
spread out. And this one's already had a head start, this bottom one here. So I can see why these guys are used heavily when people are grafting cacti because they do propagate easily. They're very quick to grow. This is only six weeks long and they can branch out very quickly. And as you can see here, usually when you uh, cut the top here and you insert a cacti, Basically, all the energy and food is going to be up to feed the cacti up above. That's what grafting is for. Of course, I'm not an expert at it, not yet, but I hope to explore it someday in this channel. But really quickly again, look at all these. Look at that. Don't that bring a smile to your face? This is probably a nice plant to give to people because it's so easy to care for. It's one of the easier succulents to care for. This one is quite spectacular. This is a top cutting. As you can, as you can see, the new flesh here, the new growth is lighter green in color and it's got many, many leaves. Look at the thorns and the leaves. This is a spectacular plant. It is a survivor and it's put out two arms. Look at that. It's two, hello. It's like two arms flailing in the air. So this is doing really, this is, so marvelous. I wasn't expecting it to branch out because this is a top cutting, but it did. So I'm really, really grateful. And this one here is looking gorgeous as well. Look at that form. It's just so sculptural. And I also like propagating these now because they're so random. You cannot, uh, ex you cannot predict what they're going to do. This is another top cutting, but this top cutting is not putting out secondary vines, which is fine, I guess. This is how we normally would purchase them as a single uh, branch like this and then that one is putting out three vines behind is putting out. all of them survived I had zero deaths on these this is cute too it's put out a lot of uh, these tiny little branches and this little one that's trying to come off from the bottom oh man I don't know what I'm gonna do with all these this is another top cutting it's doing beautifully but it's not giving me any vines which is fine again these are this is how you would normally purchase them as a single it's a single branch. Here is another month and a half update. I actually threw the plants out here. It's getting direct sunlight and it's getting rained on almost every day. As you can see, the media is constantly wet, but it's still surviving because I didn't have space up in that room to care for all these plants. I have newer plants that needed rehabbing up there, but it really, really did fine. This is a species that's really, really easy to care for. Look at how beautiful they look in a forest like this. I have to let them go at some point because I am moving home and I have no space for them. But that's insane. I'm really loving this species. And this is the mother plant that we cut from. And this is why they're often used for grafting. Again, you cut a triangle on top and you just mount a succulent or a cacti on top of it and graft it on. That's something that I want to get into in the future. But for now, I'm still a succulent killer. Give me a few more years to correct my ways. Look at all these new arms that are just appearing. So yeah, this is why these guys are very, very inexpensive. They're very cheap. They can tolerate a wide variety of condition. This is living under another plant, so it's not getting direct sunlight at all, but it's doing really well. It's getting bright indirect light. And I've seen these grown in medium light as well. So I really, really recommend these for just like beginners or if you have like an office space or something where you want to see things constantly growing but you don't want to give them too much care, you don't want to stress out too much, this is the right plant for you. All right, enough. I'm doing such crazy marketing on this plant. They should pay me for it. <laughs> Anyways, I'm at Botanist on Instagram. Feel free to reach out if you have any questions regarding plant care and propagations. I guess I will see you in the next episode. Look at all these arms. This is crazy. Everybody is growing. <laughs> Anyways, I will see you in the next one. Bye bye for real now.